The 3.30 p.m. meeting of the Bakersfield City Council is now in session. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 3.30 regular City Council meeting of October 20th, 2021. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go Here. Councilmember Arias? Here. Councilmember Gonzalez? Here. Councilmember Weir? Here. <laughs> Councilmember Smith? I am here. Councilmember Freeman? Here. Councilmember Gray? Councilmember Parlier. Thank you. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give it to the city clerk. All statements are given a three minute time limit, 15 minutes per topic. Please keep your comments to the 3.30 agenda items. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give them to the clerk. She'll give copies to the council. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. However, due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. Council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Please avoid any behavior that disrupts the meeting, such as repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, surpassing the three minute time limit. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers? Mayor Go, we have not received any speaker cards. Thank you. Next item, please. Under reports, item 3A, update to the TRIP program. Thank you. Mr. Clegg. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. We have several representatives from our uh, Thomas Roads Improvement Project Program. Looks like uh, Stu Patterson will kick us off, and then um, Luis Topete and others will uh, fill in uh, on this update. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor Go, members of the City Council, Stuart Patterson, Acting Public Works Director. I have with me today Luis Topete, one of our um, project engineers, project managers for the TRIP program. I also have Ravi Pudapetti, the other project manager for the TRIP program, as well as Greg Garib, who is our program manager representing Parsons for the TRIP program. And Luis is going to give you guys an update on the TRIP program. Thank you, Stu. Good afternoon. Luis Topete with the TRIP program. So it's been uh, a long while since we did an update for our trip program, so thank you for the opportunity. Um, let me start real quick uh, with a little bit of the history. As you know, the trip program started back in 2006 when former Congressman William Thomas brought over $700 million to the region, 630 of them allocated to the city of Bakersfield for uh, improvements on our network for transportation, our freeways. Uh, since then, our program has grown to over $1.4 billion to date. These are some of the projects that we have completed in 15 years. We we're very proud of the progress that we have had. And as you can see, we have over $600 million in construction dollars. This is only construction. So you can see how our, pro our project and our program had grown all the way to uh, $1.4 billion. Uh, this, this figure does not include right away acquisitions, design, utility relocations, and so forth. So this year, 2021, was a really good year for us. We were able to complete a few projects. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to go through them. Centennial Corridor Phase 1, uh, the Kern River Bridge. Uh, we completed this project, basically included a couple of bridges. And this project was in preparation for the big Centennial project, the connector from Westside Parkway all the way to uh, 99 and 58 interchange. The Stockdale Highway Enos Lane Roundabout also completed this year, not, not too long ago. Um, I personally have been out there a couple of, couple of two, two, three times last month, and uh, I have not been there in peak hour, but my understanding is that it's working very well, a lot better than what we had before uh, our four-way inter intersection. The 24th Street Improvement Project also completed not too long ago. I'm sure that uh, all of us have driven 24th Street. Um, is, in my opinion, is great, uh, great project. 
Uh, we only need Caltrans to finalize uh, the last section, which is their project from Oak to 99. Seems like the last couple of weeks they made some improvements, but they still need to complete their projects so that we have a nice flow of traffic in the corridor. The Bell Terrace operational improvement also completed this year. Uh, we basically demolished the old bridge on Bell Terrace and built a brand new bridge. Uh, some of the, the reasons for doing that was a uh, substandard vertical clearance over 99. And the other one, and most important, is that uh, we need additional uh, room to build auxiliary lanes. In this photo, you can see those auxiliary lanes already built or in construction on both ends of the, the bridge. So we needed a longer bridge than what it was there. So this, this project also in preparation for the Centennial uh, project. So right now we have um, three projects under construction. Um, even though Roselle Highway widening is not quite in construction, we had bid opening and we identified granite construction as the lowest bidder. So uh, next month we're gonna bring an item uh, in agenda for, for your consideration and approval to award this contract. Uh, Bakersfield Freeway Connector, which is phase three of Centennial, and also the, the main line, phase four for Centennial. They're both uh, under construction right now and uh, percentage completed. You can see there, 70 and 51%. So with that, we have another $200 million in construction dollars through these projects. So Roselle Highway, real quick, uh, is basically a continuation of our first segment that we did a couple of years ago when we widened uh, Rosedale. Uh, so now we're continuing another half a mile from Callaway to Verdugo. We are adding uh, lanes, so we're bringing uh, Rosedale from four to six lanes. We had, the, like I mentioned before, we had a bid opening in September. We will will uh, award the contract in November so that we're ready to construct uh, January of 2022. A little bit of uh, also history on Centennial Corridor. This is the largest uh, trade program project. Our environmental clearance took eight years to complete. Uh, we had to acquire over 200 residential properties and about 30 commercial properties. The cost of the right-of-way acquisitions was around $140 million. This project was divided in the four phases that I talked about. Uh, two main reasons for doing that. One, to move phase one forward. We had, at the time, enough uh, federal funding still from our earmarks that were awarded to the city back in 2005. So we had enough funding to move phase one forward. And the other reason, and probably the most important reason, was to seek for additional funding for the other three phases. We were able to uh, come up with three phases, which at the same time were standalone projects with, that had independent utility, and so that we could apply for funding. So in 2017, it was, it was a great year for us as far as additional funding for our program. We obtained $172 million. This is in addition to what we had in 2006. Uh, the first uh, additional funding that uh, we received was the SHOP program through our partnership with Caltrans. They basically funded the Bell Terrace project. They gave us $34 million to construct Bell Terrace. After that, we obtained uh, through competitive uh, basis $25 million from SB1 monies, and that helped us go out to bid with uh, phase three of the Centennial, which is the, the uh, Baker Street Freeway Connector. Then the other two additional funding, Infra, uh, we are very proud of this, this particular grant uh, because we were one of two projects in Western US to receive those funds in 2017. Our project and another project in San Bernardino were the only ones to receive funding through this program. 
And then through current clock, we were able to uh, have uh, additional step money. So all that allowed us to complete the Centennial Corridor project without having to bond any money, which was one of the plans when we were uh, designing the Centennial project. So real quick, uh, I talked about the four phases. Uh, you see here in, in orange and in blue, um, the completed projects, the Kern River Bridge and Bell Terrace project. And then phase three in red, which is under construction. Very quickly, is, uh, this project is going to improve the westbound 58 to southbound 99 connector, that loop that uh, is currently at that location, we're gonna improve it, uh, reconstruct it basically. It includes three structures depicted there in blue uh, to allow for additional uh, off-ramps and auxiliary lanes that will take you uh, straight to um, main off-ramps or 99, depending on, on the movement. So this is what we have uh, coming from, West, from the Westside Parkway uh, on the eastbound direction. You're gonna be able to exit to Ming without going to 99. It's a straight, straight ramp from Centennial Corridor. We will all obviously have the connector to 99 and then the straight connector to 58. This project awarded to security paving for about $49 million, and uh, the expectation completion date is early 2022. And here are some of the photos uh, of our current project. As you can see on the left, that was the existing loop connector. We were working on a tunnel under 58. And then on the right, on the, on the background, you can see that loop connector already built. Uh, is shown there in white, uh, and that is because we reconstructed that loop ramp with concrete, reinforced concrete rather than asphalt. Our phase four is the main connector shown here in green, and in darker green are the structures for this project. This is a 1.2 uh, mile brand new uh, freeway, three lanes in each direction, and we have over 20 structures. So a very complex project, awarded to security paving for $147 million, and the expectation for completion is early 23, so they are about uh, one, one year apart. And here, here we have some photos of our current project. The contractor has basically been working on the structures. So you have their different bridges that they are either under construction or they already built, which is the normal way of uh, tackling these projects. They do the structures first, and uh, probably just in the last month, they already paved uh, a lot of the main line also. Uh, they will have to come back and place concrete on top of the asphalt for the specifications. This is my favorite part of the PowerPoint because it really illustrates what we are building and you, you have an opportunity to see what it's gonna look like through this rendering. So we're looking northbound on 99 and you see the 58 connector wobble to the right and this is what it's gonna look like once we're done with our project. You can see that big flyover from 99 northbound connecting to westbound 58, and then all the ramps on the left that I talked about to connect to Ming are there. To the West Park area, this is what it looks like. Well, actually, this is what looked like six months ago. Uh, this is kind of an old photo. And this is what it will look like once we're done. The uh, bridge over La Mirada is already built, and the bridge on Morella Way, which is the one on the background, uh, is the one that we still have to connect, and, and obviously we still have to do all the concrete paving and striping, but this is what it's gonna look like once we're done. And then finally, looking from the end of Westside Parkway as we have it currently, 
This is the loop at the end of the Westside Parkway at Traxton. And this is what it's gonna look like once we are complete with our project. So now let's move on to uh, projects in design. We have the Hegeman flyover, which is the last of the projects that uh, we originally had uh, back in uh, 2007 when we uh, selected the projects that uh, we were going to do. And then we have additional landscaping projects. The Hegeman flyover is, is basically a connector of Hegeman going over State Route 99 and connecting to 204. This project was designed by Caltrans a couple of years ago. However, we didn't have funding for right of way or for construction. So we basically shelved the, the design. Um, the, during the last year, there was an effort to try to move forward with this project. So Caltrans is currently working on updating the, the design. They have new standards and new specifications, so they're bringing up to, up to date. And uh, we also pull out a portion of the project, which is a bike path, to advance it because there was an opportunity for funding. So we were able to secure some funding to construct uh, or help construct these, this project. So uh, the design for the bike path is almost done. And there's only one property that needs to be acquired for this property, and my understanding is that uh, we have reached an agreement, so very soon we will have everything so that in January or maybe even earlier, we can apply for our E76, which is our authorization to use the federal funding to go into construction. The main line, uh, we also uh, are starting the efforts of, of obtaining the right-of-way. We have um, funding for the right-of-way, and we have partial funding for uh, construction through Kerncog. There's an opportunity to, to get some money um, for construction. Uh, still not official uh, until they vote for it, but uh, we're, we're looking for opportunities, just like we did with the other projects. The Hoskin Interchange Landscape Project. So at this point, I will uh, transfer over to uh, Greg yeah. Garib and take it from here. So Greg Garib, uh, I think I'm an adopted son by now with all the trip programs being uh, completed, but uh, I was a PM for Hosking um, at the time when we built it. Uh, landscape was left out for obvious reasons because of the water shortages, but I'm happy to see that we're, we're back here to do a, a facelift. And so with that, uh, we put together When is it? Oh, there we go. So we put together a concept that's basically uh, drought tolerant, motivated. It's got a lot of hardscape features. This is something that we've been kind of uh, vetting through our, our discussions with Caltrans. And so we've come up with what we think is a really good concept for both the maintenance, uh, both from the maintenance side and from the operations side. Uh, Caltrans is very pleased with this. It's got uh, a, couple, a couple species, one being the uh, uh, blue agave that we think is a, is a nice look for the area, and also a, uh, what was our tree? Palo, Verde. Palo, Palo Verdes that we're, uh, we're considering as part of an accent to some of the roadway. Along with that, we've got uh, crushed stone and rock, but also some, some minor concrete that will give nice, nice texture to the, to the project, and also uh, will make the, the traveling uh, community, you know, uh, uh, it'll be appealing to the traveling community, so. Caltrans is really pleased with this, as I mentioned. So we've, uh, work time here. I'm trying. There you go. So because of its uh, recep reception, uh, we've also adopted this potentially for Westside Parkway. Obviously, Westside Parkway uh, being a gateway um, system for the city, we feel that it also needs some enhancements from a landscape perspective. Uh, because of its size and because of its uh, enormity, we, we split it up into three phases, this being the first phase that we're working on. Um, we've got the same type of, there you go, concept. This is just one area that we drew out, the Mohawk, the Mohawk off-ramp, where we've adopted the same type of uh, drought-tolerant uh, and hardscape look that we think is going to be you know, quite, quite appealing to the traveling public for, 
for the West Side Parkway folks. And then um, under switching gears here from, from landscaping, uh, we have two final movements uh, that didn't make the Centennial Corridors uh, project list. We think that this is something that is a, a city enhancement um, at Truxton. We think that locally it'll help uh, congestion relief both from a Roseville perspective but also from a California perspective. So we're working on a feasibility and geometric design for potential half interchange at Truxton. Um, this is just a concept. Uh, by no means is it something that we're designing yet or anything. It's just all in feasibility. Blue is considered uh, the fly uh, uh, structure and red is the roadway. So on your right side, you have an on-ramp from Truxton, which is, which, which is north to 99. And on the southbound, you have a potential hybrid flyover that will connect the Westside Parkway westbound. So this is just something that's, uh, you know, in the early stages of project nomination. Uh, we still need to do a project study report, environmental uh, uh, re reviews, but wanted to get city council familiar with this project because of its potential. So that, that's all I have. Uh, Kern Cog uh, has decided uh, in partnership with the city to fund some portion of this feasibility. Uh, Caltrans has given us a, a thumbs up to sort of study this, these alternatives. So for, with that, uh, Kern Cog will be also participating in some potential funding of a, of a study report along with the city for, for traffic analysis and other, and other benefit cost analysis. So that's all I have. Thank you. And also available for questions, obviously. Thank you. Any further comments, Mr. Clegg, Mr. Pettison? No, Mayor, thank you. We're open for questions. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. I just first and foremost want to say great job, team. I mean, really excellent work. Um, not only are the projects first rate, um, but uh, your um, customer service and your, uh, you know, base towards the community and interactions with the public have been really, really tremendous. I've, colleagues have had an opportunity to work closely with TRIP as they um, have two major projects within Ward 2, uh, the 24th Street Project and the Centennial Corridor. And over the years, we've uh, had many, many uh, interactions with various different residents and property owners and stakeholders. And um, this team has really done an excellent job. So I, I want to commend you publicly for all the work. Uh, that you that you've done, um, I, I, I'm really excited about the possibility of the Truxton improvement. I think that's sorely needed and something that comes up in my conversations with various different community members, uh, pretty frequently. Uh, so it'd be exciting to see that develop. I do have a couple questions. Um, one is, uh, my heart goes out to, and I, I really want to thank the residents of West Park for all of their patience and their understanding and good nature as we're um, doing major construction in their neighborhood. Um, I was in Centennial Park actually this morning at the dog park walking my dog and had a chance to visit with some residents and um, you know they're all taking it in stride. Um, I just wanted to verify with um, perhaps Stu, um, after we're done with the completion of the Centennial Corridor, the plan is to then go back and to make improvements to the roadway in the neighborhood streets. Um, I'm not sure if we have a specific budgeted item right now. Um, I do know that both as a result of, well, just the age and the condition of the roads, yep. but the result of construction equipment and impacts around there, um, we, we will have to take a look at that. Um, but as far as I know, we don't have anything specifically current year budgeted to specifically do that. We would need to look for some funds and... and, and I would like us to, yeah. to look into that as we proceed and look towards the conclusion of this particular project to then go back and to make improvements to the neighborhood streets. Uh, they have been <laughs> beaten up due to heavy equipment and trucks and whatnot. So that includes California. I know that. I'm sure that's on the list as well. Uh, but I would appreciate uh, staff uh, preparing for that in future budget years. Um, the other question is with regard to 24th Street, which I think looks great. And we've received many compliments on the landscaping. 
Um, there was a concern related to uh, some of the landscaping, some of the trees didn't, didn't make it. And so I understand that is a contractor's responsibility and that they're gonna be replacing that. Can we, can we just get, for the public's knowledge, um, some validation on that? Yes, council member, and, and through uh, the mayor, uh, you are correct. We did it, uh, uh, see early in the summer uh, some plantings that were struggling. We had some initial responses there. Given our climate, it is typical to see some plantings not quite make it, and so it's actually um, um, something that's been discussed at length, and uh, the contractor has actually met with staff on site We've discussed a plan to replant all of those plantings. We were waiting for cooler weather, so we're getting uh, in the time frame that we can uh, do that at this point. Um, but uh, would just note that you know we did pick drought tolerant um, pallets. We put irrigation in. Just again with our climate, uh, we we saw some losses, uh, but those will be replaced by the contractor. Okay, great. And and then finally there. Um, I, I don't think, I think it's within Caltrans purview and it's actually their project, but um, just further west of uh, the 24th Street improvement project, there's some improvements uh, underneath the 99 uh, bridge um, across the Buck Owens. I think it's shared by my ward and Council Member, or Vice Mayor Weir's ward, um, but there has been what seems to be a delay in the project. Can you just kind of give us an update there and when we can expect that project to be concluded? Because I will tell you, there have been a number of business owners who have been concerned about the, the length of that project. Yeah, actually what Caltrans did was they, act, it, even though that's a, a part of the planned 24th Street overall improvements, Caltrans um, took that project and they have actually included it in the work on the freeway at 99, right above it, if you've seen that as mm -hmm. well. And so um, those improvements aren't necessarily on the critical path of the overall project. We have been in meetings, we actually started some regular biweekly meetings with Caltrans staff, um, and that's one of the projects that we discuss regularly with them. Y you may have noticed recently, about two weeks ago, they did move the, um, the K-Rail, which had limited it to two lanes to open it back up to at least three lanes with a right turn lane north to Buck Owens, which has helped a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, what they've indicated to me is um, they expect to have that area paved, including under, if you notice that the ramp now will go between the mm -hmm. column bent and the new abutment they've I built, that. similar to kind of California mm -hmm. Avenue, um, eastbound to get on to northbound 99. And uh, they expect that that first week of November, they're indicating to me. So hopefully that will happen and we will continue to have. So sometime fighting. in January we should expect the improvement. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate hopefully. it. Hopefully. Thank you. Council Member Weir. Oh, sorry, Council Member Smith next. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Great project and I appreciate all the work for a lot of years and it really has improved the community and the, the existing improvements, uh, you know, the, the West Side Parkway coming downtown I think has helped the economy of downtown and, and definitely helps the West Side and I always like to reinforce that, you know, because of the great work that staff did and, and working in partnerships uh, we do have no borrowing that we had expected to borrow over 200 million dollars and and that's a wonderful thing for the city uh, the Hagman flyover I, I know Kern Cog I'm on the board there and, and we're getting ready to move some money and and so that project's moving forward if, if you could send me the the bike path how it ended up I seen a couple different designs and I wasn't sure the, what the bike the way path? the bike path uh, Do you want up. just the overall sort of alignment? And yeah, okay. yeah, if you can just email that to me, I would appreciate it. And I, I would also state that the, the Truxton 99 connection uh, is exciting. If, if we can convince Caltrans that you know, that works and, and move that forward, that would be great. So great work, keep it up, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Smith, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, improvements are coming along just fine. Everything seems to be taking shape. Uh, and I appreciate that you're looking forward to the Truxton uh, 
additions in the project there, but is there anything on the horizon for uh, California and Oak for that area? I'm, I'm not aware of specific improvements at that intersection, but what we anticipate is by if this project goes through, because that's what's happening, obviously, I think everybody knows everybody's heading east on, on the freeway, they get off on Truxton and people who want to continue uh, onto 99 have to turn and go over to California or turn south on Oak and, and get onto 99 that way. So um, Caltrans has done some preliminary traffic studies uh, as in anticipation, I, I'm sorry, not Caltrans, actually Parsons Group, in anticipation for submitting um, what Caltrans would want to see for the kind of improvement. And, um, and there's quite a bit of relief. I don't, I don't have the exact counts and numbers, but, um, but just by doing that on-ramp combination at Truxton and, and 99, um, you'd see a huge improvement at, at both those, the Rosedale Corridor and California. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, I don't see any other requests to speak. Motion to receive and file. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Thank you to all of you for your presentations. Thank you. Motion is approved with council members Gray and Parlier absent. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Closed session item 4A, conference with labor negotiator pursuant to government code section 54957.6. Motion to move to adjourn to closed session. We're adjourned to closed session. Do we have some students here? We have students back there. I don't, uh, where are you from? Oh, okay, very good. Typically, this meeting runs very short, and it typically doesn't qualify for your class assignment. Uh, we'll be back at 5.15 for a much longer meeting, but welcome. I'm glad to see you here. Reconvening the 3.30 City Council meeting. Madam City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one item in closed session tonight, item 4A, and staff was given direction by a unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we stand adjourned at 537.